Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Endless OS. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, they're down below in the description. Also, you can zip on over to my Patreon page. And if you like what the channel's doing, help us out a little bit. This is Endless OS. This is what you're greeted with when you put it on a USB or load it up in a virtual machine. What we're going to do is go through this, skip it real quick. I'm going to go ahead and click try it. We're going to pick English. Help make Endless better for everyone. Automatically save and send usage statistics and problem reports to Endless. All data is anonymous. I think I will opt out of that. And now we're ready, so we're going to try it. Well, here we are, Endless OS. As you can tell right off the bat, it's got a different desktop than you're used to seeing. It's almost like the application menu in GNOME, and I think you can scroll through it, and it stays up on the page. So it comes with Chromium and Chrome. I'm going to go to their website. Okay, their website pops up. When you open Chromium, it automatically has Adblock turned on by default, so I'm going to go ahead and shut that. And this is Endless's website. Basically state that it's technology that enriches life. Endless OS comes preloaded with hundreds of useful resources for students and families and even works without internet access. So what they're saying is once you have it installed, if you don't have internet access, you can still get plenty of use out of this operating system. Contents and apps for education and opportunity. It's got learning resources with over 50,000 Wikipedia articles, video lessons, and apps across a range of topics. Endless puts knowledge at the learner's fingertips. School and entrepreneurship, a powerful tool for school and creative creating at work. Apps in Endless create documents, presentations, and spreadsheets compatible with Microsoft Office. Play while learning. Preloaded with hours of learning videos and games. Endless offers something fun for the whole family, including games that teach kids to code. That's awesome. Well, that's Endless's website. If you want to go over and check it out, it's EndlessOS.com. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Down here on the bar, you've got this sunflower. Let's click on it. And that is your settings, social accounts, feedback, help, lock, power off, log off. you got date and time. You've got battery, sound, and of course your internet connection. Over here you have reformat. You have the app center. Let's click on the app center. And this is the app center that comes up. You've got featured apps, learning, reference and news, games, learn to code, multimedia, work, utilities, dev tools. I'm going to go learn to code and let's just pick the passage. This one is not installed out of the box so that would be something that you would go download. So I'm wondering if they have just normal apps. Let's try Caden Live. They do have Caden Live and that was a pretty responsive app center that's very quick let's try obs and there's obs this app center guys is very quick i know in some distributions when i go to the app center and type something in it takes a while to load this one as i'm typing it's filling in the blanks LibreOffice, and there you go so a very responsive and quick application store it'll show you what's installed and we're going to go ahead and close out of that chromium we've already looked at let's look at what kind of file manager we have and this just seems to be files let me double check that yes it is it's files 3.38.2 stable that's a GNOME application, but you got your usual suspects over here. So that is your file manager. You got LibreOffice installed. You've got Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, media. We have photos and videos, curiosity, social. It shows to be Twitter and Gmail, and then music, which is Rhythmbox. Next, we have archive manager, Bracero, calculator, clocks, contacts, disk usage, disks, document scanner, image viewer. It's got HTOP installed out of the box. Let's see what kind of resources we're using. I've issued this machine two gigabytes of RAM. At present, we're using 1.07 gigabytes, and it's using 260 megabytes of the 2.91 gigs of swap. And the CPU is using just under 2% at rest with terminal open. That's not too bad at all, so let's go ahead and close out of that. The memory over a gig for this desktop is a little heavy for what you're going to be used to in a Linux environment, especially with KDE now solidly running below 1 gig. You've got help, you got Google Chrome, you got Gedit, fonts, Evolution Mail, LibreOffice Suite, parental controls, remote desktop, screenshots. And you've got selfie, settings, sidetrack, system, system monitor, and terminal. System monitor will probably say we're using just a few more resources than we are on HTOP. 1.1 gig and just under 10% of the CPU. Can we right click? Let's see if we can change the background. We get several different backgrounds. I just want to try one different. There we go. There's a different background. Up here it says search Google and more. So let's go settings. So you can change network, Bluetooth, background notifications, mouse and touchpad, removable media, power. Your usual suspects over here under settings. You can add a picture up here if you want to change the background to a picture that you want. So if we're going to search Google, let's search eBuzz Central. Okay, so Chromium opens up. You've got eBuzz Central on YouTube right there, so we're good to go. That desktop search worked out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. 
that. It's a very interesting operating system. It is different. It's not something I believe I would use on a daily basis because it's more focused towards kids, I do believe, which is fine. We need variety in Linux, and believe me, we have it. But Endless OS looks definitely impressive. It's clean. It's a little heavier on resources than I want. But at the same time, it's something new, it's something different, and it's something that can bring more people to Linux, I believe. Tell me what you think about Endless OS in the comments below. Is it something you would use? Do you think it's more kid-focused or play-focused? Do me a favor before you go. Like and subscribe or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Plus, follow me on my socials. They're down in the description below. And if you like what we're doing with the channel, zip on over to Patreon and help us out a little bit. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next video.